think about index math in algebraic uh, case theory. Uh, thank you. And I want to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak, uh, even after snowfall prevented me from speaking last week. So uh, thank you. And uh, thanks, everybody, for sticking around uh, to the end of the day. Um, so I'm talking today about a, uh, a part of an ongoing project with Oliver Braunling and Michael Grochenig. And the first papers in this project will be hitting the archive, hopefully by the end of this week. And then, with some luck in short succession, uh, a few more will pop up. Um, so the goal of this talk is to uh, construct a map. Uh, and I'll sort of set up things, tell you why this is interesting, and then actually give the construction. So uh, throughout this talk, R is going to be a ring. And the kind of basic object I want to consider will be the ring of Laurent series with the T-adic topology. And the sort of category uh, that's sitting in the background is uh, called the category of Tate modules. And for our purposes, a countable Tate module uh, is a topological direct sum and of the Laurent series. Okay, so this is this is our sort of uh, background, and I need to get a few definitions up on the board. So the first definition, and this is a sort of key one throughout this talk, is that a lattice in the Tate module of Laurent series um, is a uh, submodule uh, such that the quotient is a discrete uh, projective R module, um, and we require that L be isomorphic to the topological dual of another uh, discrete projective module. Um, so uh, topological duals are a sort of standard notion, but if you haven't seen them before, um, the basic example to keep in mind is that the topological dual of the um, module uh, underlying the polynomial algebra is just the module underlying the formal power series of the TIAC topology. So this is the sort of the type of thing. And as this example indicates, um, the basic lattice that we'll consider is the uh, submodule of formal power series. OK, so um, uh, it's a bit unfortunate, I guess, the naming. There's a lot of things running around called tape modules these days. Uh, this one dates to work of Balenson. Um, from the 80s, uh, so, but if you've seen a different notion of tape module, uh, just put it out of your mind for the purpose of this talk. Um, and the main object to study today is going to be um, something called the Sato Grossmannian. So, the Sato Grossmannian of the Laurent series, I'm just going to define it to be the set of lattices. Uh, in um, uh, the, the Laurent series. Okay, so um, I'll say a little bit more about this object in just a second um, because it's a pretty uh, important and interesting object. But let me just state that the uh, what the goal of the talk is. I should say that the sort of key fact uh, about lattices is that if L and L prime are both lattices, are, are sort of a nested pair of lattices then the quotient is a finally generated uh, projective R module. So lattices are somehow commensurable uh, um, uh, submodules. And um, this sort of motivates the following definition, which uh, one of the goals for this talk is to show that this definition is well defined. But we'll say that if L and L prime are a pair of lattices, then the formal difference L minus L prime, we'll define that to be given by pick some uh, lattice N, which contains both L and L prime, and then take the formal difference of the two quotients and view this as a point in the K-theory space 
of our ring R. So uh, if you're not used to thinking this way about K theory, the key thing to remember is that there's a, a canonical map from the classifying space of the category of projective R modules into K theory. And so I can talk about a point in the K theory space associated to a finitely generated projective module. And the K theory space is an infinite loop space, so I can add and subtract points. And that's sort of what's meant by this notation. And um, N, sorry, N is, uh, we, we pick any N that contains both, N is also a lattice and it contains both L and L primes. It's a common envelope. And the goal of this talk So the goal is to uh, uh, sort of show that um, the assignment, which takes a lattice uh, L and assigns it to the formal difference of um, the power series minus L, this defines uh, a natural map from the sasa grossmannian to the K-theory space of R. Okay, so um, I'm gonna, uh, time permitting, construct this very explicitly. But um, before giving this construction, I should say a little bit about why this is interesting and why you might care. Um, so the, the Sassagrasmanian is a, a very rich uh, and interesting object in geometry. Um, I've defined it as a set, but uh, it's actually, uh, this set I've defined as a set of R points of an in scheme. So you can think of it as some sort of infinite dimensional algebraic manifold. So it's an in scheme. And this turns out to be the sort of natural geometric setting for studying the KP and KDV hierarchies. Yeah? Yeah, so, that, so certainly contained in this, this definition, the construction will show that this definition is independent of the choice of n. And we're also going to show that we can, uh, this map will be natural in R. So um, uh, this will be a, a map from an in scheme to uh, a sheaf of infinite loop spaces. So it's a very well-behaved geometric uh, map. But, uh, but I'll, I'll state it just for the R points, and then it'll, it'll be clear that everything is uh, natural with respect to uh, all the maps in sight. Um, okay, so uh, this is relevant for integral uh, uh, hierarchy of PDE. Um, this object also plays a very important role in the representation theory of loop groups. Um, and uh, there's an um, analog for Hilbert spaces that um, is very important uh, for index theory. So, um, the project with uh, Michael and Ali, um, we're thinking a lot about these last two points, but today I'll talk about the index theory. And let me sort of give a bit of an indication of how that looks so that we can sort of understand what this map means from that perspective. Okay. so. I'm going to take a brief detour uh, into Hilbert space. So uh, H will be uh, a complex set rule Hilbert space. And um, just recall that a bounded operator on Hilbert space is Fred home uh, if the dimension of A, uh, sorry, the dimension of its kernel and the dimension of its co-kernel are both finite. And we'll just write uh, Fred H for the space of Fred home operators. And the uh, classical theorem uh, due to Atiyah and Yannick is that there exists a map call index from the space of Fred home operators to the uh, classifying space of topological complex K theory. And they construct this map 
and then they show that this map is an equivalence. And this, this theorem is sort of the guiding um, uh, theorem for how we sort of, for how I think about this area. Um, and if we consider not just Hilbert space, but actually a sort of polarized Hilbert space, so um, the sort of basic example is the Hilbert space of L2 functions on the circle with the polarization H plus given by L2 functions on the disk. Um, we can uh, build some other objects that give us some different models for space of Fredholm operators. So there's a notion due to um, Siegel and Wilson of the restricted general linear group, and this will just be um, invertible operators on Hilbert space uh, whose uh, projection to the polarization uh, is Fredholm. And uh, the projection onto the, orth onto the orthogonal complement uh, is Hilbert Schmidt. So this is what this restricted general linear group is. And um, there's also uh, an analog of the sato grassmannian due to Siegel and Wilson. And I'll just write it as such. So once you have these definitions, um, uh, it will be, uh, I'm, so I'm about to state uh, uh, a theorem that will uh, partially answer that question, that will sort of say that. Um, I mean, uh, it will be natural with respect to R, so it'll actually, um, it'll be given by this formula, it'll be natural with respect to R, and it's going to fit into a commuting square that I'm about to motivate. I mean, this is a sheaf of infinite loop spaces, and this is an in scheme. So it's, sort of quite, it's quite different objects. The point is that you'll have uh, some geometric data coming from this. Uh, but but uh, uh, let me get the square on the board, and then that will start to answer that question. OK, so a sort of uh, easy corollary once you know the definitions of a Tia and Yonic theorem, is that there exists a homotopy commuting square where this map will send an automorphism to the translate of the polarization, and then this map will be the analog of the map that I'm about to that is the focus of this talk. So we'll send a point in this Grassmannian to this formal difference, uh, which we, you can define uh, in very similar fashion to how I just defined it in the Sato case. This will be the index map. Uh, this will just send G So there's just a homotopy commuting square of this form, and from Tia, Yannick, Siegel, and Wilson, all maps are equivalences. So we have a, a sort of four different models for the same space from the square. And the theorem about this index map uh, that will sort of uh, tell you how to think about it is that um, for ring R, uh, there exists a homotopy commuting square um, where we have the automorphisms of the Tate module of the Ronce series mapping to the Sato Grassmannian just given by translating the power series. We have this index map that I'm going to construct. And then here we're going to have, there's a canonical map from uh, the automorphisms of an object in exact category to the looping of the K-theory space. And there exists a map filling in uh, this bottom row here. Um, so uh, there's a dictionary due to sort of Sato, Sato, Siegel, and Wilson that says that um, using the Fourier transform, we should understand 
the polarized Hobart space of L2 function on the circle as uh, analogous to the Tate module of Laurent series. And under that dictionary, the restricted general linear group is the analog of the automorphisms. The um, Grassmannian corresponds to the Grassmannian. And this sort of homotopy commuting square is in addition to that. And there's a sort of, um, basically, we can think of everything in this square, these three points, as models of the space of Fredholm operators. And so this is a sort of uh, algebraic, uh, an avatar in algebraic K theory of the classical index map. This is sort of how you think about it. Um, and so this uh, theorem due to uh, Sho Saito from last summer that um, uh, I'll sort of call this the index map. And the theorem is that the index map uh, is an equivalence. And to sort of make this uh, correspond between the two squares a little tighter, without too much work, you can show that um, if you take the looping of the plus construction applied to the classifying space of the general linear group, this is also equivalent to the space of Fredholm operators. And similarly, if you take the looping of the plus construction of the automorphisms of the Tate module, this is equivalent to the looping of the K-theory space of Tate R modules. So sort of this proposition tells you that you can really think of this K-theory space as another model of the space of Fredholm operators. And Saito's theorem is now the analog in algebraic K theory of the Satya-Yonic theorem. So in this sense, you can think about uh, these are the properties that I want this map from the gross mind to have. I want to have this relationship to index theory. I want to fit into these commuting squares. I want to be natural with respect to R. And that will allow us to uh, do constructions for um, uh, sort of in local invariance of schemes called tame symbols or of Conte Carrere symbols, and also to uh, uh, go back and revisit some material on double loop groups uh, due to Franklin and Zhu from uh, 2010, I want to say. Okay, so um, enough about uh, sort of what the background motivation is. Um, let me spend the last second half of my talk actually building you this construction. Let's see here. I'll just erase the whole thing. Are, are there any questions before I move on to the technical part of the talk? If any pop up, uh, don't feel shy. But so, in what I'm about to do, I'm going to construct a very explicit map to algebraic K theory. And for that, uh, to sort of do that with the minimum homotopy theory, I want to use an explicit model for the K theory space. And a very convenient one um, was written down by Waldhausen uh, in the 80s. So I'm going to begin by recalling a basic construction on simplicial sets, which, if I understood uh, Domenico's talk properly, he was using the L-infinity algebra version of this construction, and I think this construction also showed up in Ezra's talk. Um, so I'll recall that construction, recall Waldhausen's construction of K-theory, and then just write down a map. So this construction is called the decalage, and um, it, it describes the space of degenerate paths, is sort of what's going on here. So, if X is a simplicial set, then the decalage of X is uh, the simplicial set uh, whose n simplices are given by the n plus 1 simplices of X and whose space maps um, are given by um, the map which sends an n simplex to its I plus first phase. So we're basically just shifting the index up by one consistently. We do the same thing with the um, with the uh, degeneracy maps. So um, uh, decalage, like I said, is the space of degenerate paths. So we have to have a, a sort of starting point, and ending point for those paths. So we also have. Uh, a sort of uh, endpoint of those paths, which just on n simplices 
is given by the zero space map. And we also have a sort of starting point for those paths. And this maps to the zero simplices of X viewed as a constant simplicial set. And this is just given on N simplices by uh, applying the first phase map n plus one times. Okay, so that's a very explicit definition. Um, you can explicitly realize the path space, and it just turns out to be the right thing to um, do. And I guess the, the sort of key point is that this map delta one is a deformation retract. So this is some space of very degenerate paths. Okay. Um, so, uh, let me briefly recall Waldhausen's S construction. I'll be doing this in the sort of simplest case. So, if C is an exact category, and you should just uh, sort of fix in mind the category of finally projective, finally generated projective R modules, then we define a simplicial set uh, called S of, uh, S of C, um, and uh, S of C has N simplices given by um, diagrams in C, and these are sort of diagrams where we're going to consider uh, it's just a sequence of um, sort of inclusion admissible monics, so just kernels in this exact structure. So in projective R modules, just inclusions of direct summands. And then we're going to choose um, uh, quotients for all of these inclusions or for all the inclusions in sight, just as sort of a, a way of canonically fixing the data. So really the thing to keep in mind is we just have some nested sequence of inclusions of sub-objects and then a choice of quotients for all of those. And the, um, this is a simplicial set where the, the um, i face map uh, sort of equals just forgetting the i uh, row counting from the top, and the ith column, uh, counting from the top. So this is the zero throw, and we just go down from there. So uh, that's a very explicit uh, uh, description. Um, and the theorem, this is kind of the amazing thing about this definition, this is due to Waldhausen, is that um, one, if we GMF, we realize the simplicial set, uh, it's an infinite loop space. Uh, so that's quite strong. And two, the loop space of the geometric realization is equivalent to the K-theory space of our exact category C. So this is a very explicit construction. And one of the benefits of this, I'm doing time -wise. one of the benefits of this is that it gives us a way of uh, explicitly constructing maps into K-theory. So I guess the basic proposition is that if X is a simplicial set, then a homotopy commuting square of the form X mapping into the decalage of C mapping into S of C, and then this will just be the inclusion of the base point. A homotopy commuting square of this form uh, determines a map from X into the K-theory space of C. And the way to see this is that um, the uh, S construction has a single vertex. The decalage retracts onto the vertex set of our simplicial set. So this, uh, this part of the square is contractible, and we're now just using the universal property of loop spaces. All right. So um, now I'm just going to build the map, and then I will be done. <laughs> So um, I have to write down a nasty definition, and this, this definition sort of goes to Amnon's question from earlier. I, I wrote down this definition of the difference of two lattices, and that definition involved a choice. I had to choose a common envelope. So I'm going to build a simplicial set which encodes making all choices at once and all sort of um, uh, interpolations between them, and then I'm going to show that uh, when I geometrically realize uh, all my choices sort of even out in the wash. 
So um, this part is technical. I apologize for that. It will go quickly. Um, L is going to be a uh, subset of the square of the decalage of the S construction of tape modules um, squared. And I'm having a condition which means that So this will consist of the subsimplicial set of this thing whose end simplices are pairs of sequences of nested chains of lattices uh, of length n, where the first nested chain contains an arbitrary lattice, and the second nested chain uh, contains the power series We'll add in all quotients, and the key point that this fiber product builds in is that uh, once we ignore the first term, this chain is just a chain. These two chains are equal, so we're picking out somehow uh, a post set of um, all common enveloping lattices, and then we're just choosing all the quotients in sight that would be needed for this. Um, and once you have this definition, uh, the map kind of follows, the map to K theory follows very formally. So uh, the key fact is the quotients of lattices by sublattices are just finitely generated projective modules. So if we apply the zeroth face map for getting the top row and just passing the quotients, we're going to uh, get a map into um, the decalage of the S construction of the category of finitely generated R modules. And if we again apply the uh, uh, sort of uh, D0 in both factors to get down to the square of the S construction, just by inspection, because we chose all of our quotients of these common lattices to be the same in both factors, these, each factor of this map will be equal. So sort of key is that both factors in the above map are equal. And now if we geometrically realize this is an infinite loop space, so we have a contractible space of, of subtraction maps send two points x and y to x minus y. And if we compose that with these maps, because the two factors are equal, we have a homotopy commuting square of the desired form, which canonically commutes to homotopy. So I get this square just from the definitions. I use the fact that this is contractible, and I now have a map from these formal properties into the K-theory space of, sorry, I'm writing C, and I mean uh, projectively, finally generated projective R modules. Um, and then the fact is that uh, any two lattices uh, admit a common envelope. So if I project, and this will be the last thing I'll say, if I Sorry, I have my L here. And if I just forget all the chains of common enveloping lattices and just project down to the L here, that gives me a map from L to the Grossmannian of my Tate module. And uh, this fact about lattices shows that um, L breaks up as a disjoint union of things equivalent to nerves of directed post sets. So when I geometrically realize the fibers of this map are contractible, so I have an equivalence. So if I pick a section of this map, pick an inverse, and compose with the map I just constructed, I get this map to the K-theory space of R. And if you run through the definitions, um, uh, if you're so inclined to run through the definitions that are written up on the board, you'll see that this map is precisely given by uh, taking a lattice uh, L 
choosing some uh, common enveloping lattice of L in the power series and then just taking the quotient. And the steps ensure that uh, our choices all give canonically equivalent uh, answers. So uh, that's the map. Um, that's uh, a sort of small taste of how we do index theory and algebraic K theory. Um, and thank you for listening to my talk. <laughs>